All righty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacadis, Mori, Medad, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael. want to welcome you to another live broadcast of Living Branch. And we are excited for everyone that is on the live stream today. And we are going to embark on... Uh, this was born out, out during the week. And it's really going to be a warning for some of us. Not not per se for everybody. It could be in the future. But this is going to be a warning for some of us. Because the Father has given us some instructions. And we really didn't take heed to what he told us. So he impressed upon me to give this lesson. So I'm thankful. <laughs> Because I want to see as many of us be successful as possible. Now, I um, want to thank all of those that are on the Living Dash Branch website uh, that have been contributing to the website and, um, you know, greeting people that come on there and showing yourself uh, friendly. I appreciate it appreciate all those and we um we have some just some marvelous people that you know support and that follow so let's do this let's pray and then we're going to get this party started All right, if you have your tali or your prayer shawl, get that out. Um, you know, not everybody <laughs> follows, but whenever we go to prayer, we have, we're, we're covered. Because we understood what Shaul was saying when he talked about, you know, it's a shame, it's a shameful man to cover his head. He, he was not talking about cover like the priest he was talking about covering like a woman would cover her hair to to veil so we have to get some understanding so people you know just every day there's a a new revelation that's really an old thing people are revitalizing so you got to be careful who you listen to and who you follow else you will go astray easy all right, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malakha Alam. Father, we say Toda Reba for all of our mispakah. We thank you, Father, for their hearts and minds. We thank you, Father, for the mission that you have given us. Hallelujah. We ask you, Father, to continue to stretch out your hand. There are people from near and far. There are people that we have to reach at the, from the four corners of the earth where you scattered us. Now, I pray, Father, you set our hearts and minds. Give us the finances that we need to take care of this mission because i know father you're going to be sending us out and make our hearts and minds ready and those father that you have put in their hearts to be a part of what we're going to do i pray father that you prepare their hearts and minds and i thank you father for this lesson today i thank you for those that will help those that will encourage and those that it will warn I give you praise, honor, and esteem in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hillel to Yahuwah, Amin. Alrighty. So, today's very simplistic lesson is warning. Friends, how many of us have them? Because that's a very loose, loose word that's used. No, someone said you're my friend. It's very, very open-ended, loose. But we're going to bring, hopefully, some scriptural clarity and help you see some things today. This is going because I'm trying. That's right, Akvik. Oh, boy, friends. 
because the people that you think have your best interest in at heart they really only have their own interests at heart in projecting themselves everything is about them and not about scripture not about the father it's presented like it's about him but it's really not it's all about them and what they want and what, where they're trying to go and what they're trying to get so I want to uh, if I Hopefully, I emailed uh, everybody that has contacted me. I emailed back. Uh, I get quite a few uh, emails, so I try to stay on top of those because I know some people don't have uh, anyone, you know, as far as leaders or teachers or mores that they're connected to. So sometimes you become a lifeline. And, you know, and the only time I won't respond if I'm super busy or the father tell me to hold. <laughs> because it might be a set time for me to respond. So let's look at this. Who or what am I warning you about? So we're going to go to Psalms 55. Because you really need to see this thing with your own eyes. And, and know that I'm not trying to pull wool over your eyes. So let's go here. We're going to read this whole entire psalm. And I just want you to pay attention. Okay. It's a psalm of David. So I, I want you to focus in. Just listen to the words. Let them sink, sink in. Okay, hold one second, Miss Baka. Had to make a little adjustment so the sun wouldn't shine in my eyes. All right. Okay, give ear to my prayer, O Elohim, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of the enemy. Because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me and in wrath they hate me. <laughs> my heart is sore pain within me. And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had the wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Sovereign, O Adonai, my Sovereign, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it wickedness is in the midst thereof deceit guile depart not from her streets for it was not now this is where I want you to pick up on this is really what I want you to and we're gonna tune into this here shortly. It was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then would I have hid myself 
from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of Elohim in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quickly into hell. For wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. As for me, I will call upon Elohim and Yahuwah shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. Okay, notice, notice when he's praying. Just as a side note. And cry loud. And he shall hear my voice. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Elohim shall hear and afflict them. Oh, excuse me, there were, uh, yeah, there were many with me. Elohim shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old, Selah. Because they had no changes. Therefore, they fear not Elohim. He has put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. And the words of his mouth are smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. You listening to this? His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burdens upon Yahuwah, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O Elohim, shall bring down into the pits of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. So keep this in mind right here. Because this is what some people are doing. And and, and some of us hadn't caught haven't caught on yet. The words of his or her mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in, in, in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were drawn swords. So this is what we're up against, Miss Baca. <laughs> Many of us, when we're looking at what our greatest obstacles are when it comes to people. Some look at the enemy, think it's the enemy. Some look at those that hate you. But this is what David, or Daoud, or Dawid, or David, however you want to pronounce it, I give you all of them. This is what he found out from his experience. Okay, and what he found out, and we'll read this again. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. So if it was an enemy, I could take that. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But this, this person is close by. This person is attached to you. This person is in your spear. The person that can do you the most damage is not the enemy or the one that hates you. Is the one that knows you. The one that hangs out with you. The one that you think got your back, but they really don't have your back. And you're going to find out when the time comes. Because they will throw you up under the bus in a minute. 
because all they're concerned about is themselves. They're not concerned about truth and how to execute truth and righteousness. All they're concerned about is saving their own skin, how they look in the eyes of others. But if a, purchase, a person is truly righteous, they're not worried about how uh, what others think of them. They're always going to do the right thing. They're always going to have, take the road and have humility. Okay, but notice what he says. Now, I hope this is ringing home to you because, you know, Many of us think, you know, we're going on our jobs and it's our jobs we're fighting against. And we think, you know, it, it's the people that hate us that we're fighting against. But it's bigger than that. It's deeper. Because they don't have the information that can sabotage you. And we're going to find out in a little bit, they're not the ones that you've told your intimate things and now they're going back and sharing with others. But it was thou, a man, mine equal. I got some other translations there that are interesting. My guide, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of Elohim and company. They right there, Shabbat, right there with you. Oh my goodness. They could be sitting right next to you. Whispering. To you. And you think they got your back. Okay. I, I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm. The father. Whoever this is for. You better take heed. This is your. This is going to be. We've had another series. Where he's giving us warning about this. So this is going to be a second one. And if you don't take heed this time, he's going to just let you go, go down that path so that you can find out the hard way, which you should have, which you should have saw the first time. Okay. So I put here equal someone in the walk. So let's keep going. Let's just, you know, break this down even further. Okay. Now, the word here, enemy, where it says it was not an enemy, was, if you look here, O Yav, O Yav, Yav, depending on how you want to pronounce this bet. Modern time, they're going to pronounce, since it doesn't have a negation there, they're going to pronounce it as a V. But, we are going to pronounce it as a B, B. Okay, it's an active participle, hating. So it's, it's describing something. It's describing the person as uh, an adversary, a foe. Okay, and the root word is to hate. As one of an opposite tribe or party. Hence to be hostile. Okay. Now, notice what the enemy does. Reproach. Okay. And here we have reproach. Haraf. Haraf. Which is a prime root. It means to pull off. To expose. So, the enemy is just defamed. So, there's no mystery in what this person is trying to do they're actively they they don't say they're on the same side they're not saying they're with you they are an active enemy they're defaming you they're against you um, they're trying to expose you strip just strip you to nothing that's what they're trying to do okay that's that's the enemy okay now let's go ahead on the next part, neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Okay. 
Sana is the word that's used there, hated. To hate can be an enemy or foe. But here, the word magnify, this one magnifies. So notice what um, Gadal, which is to twist, to enlarge. No, to lift up, to promote. So he's promoting himself against me. So it's almost like competition. Now you hate your competition. You got to beat down your competition. You got to make yourself look bigger. So that's what Gadal means to to. Uh, in this particular form, which is the verb to magnify himself, to make himself look bigger, to boast. That's what someone that hates you, they're in competition with you. But notice what he would do he would hide himself from you. I, I would take myself out of being competition against you. And then when you don't see me as your competition, then you don't have to act against me. So that, that's kind of the gist of what that is showing you. Okay? So that's the hate it. Now, who was it? Some folks are clueless. Okay. But it was thou a man, mine equal, my guide, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of Elohim and company. Now, I like what the Septuagint said. But thou, O man, like-minded. We like to hang out with people that think along the same lines as we do. So I'll read that whole 13th verse from the Septuagint. But thou, O man, like-minded, my God, my acquaintance, who in companionship with me sweetened our food, and we walked into the house of Elohim in accord. So when, when you think about equal, you're thinking about compatibility, you know, you, you could see yourself being friends with this person because you have things in common. You all can talk. You can get along. You know, all these elements are there. But something's missing. Okay. Then the word, the root word for equal to set in a row. To compare, equal, arrange, put in order. This is what makes this person so hard to detect. When compared to yourself, they are very much like you. So you see yourself in this person. So you in turn let your guard down. This is what makes this so hard because we lower our guard because this person is like us. When we do a comparison, they're equal. So we lower our guard and we let them in. Do you have any equals operating in your life right now? You got that? You got to... Uh, Think about this. And and, and I, I like what Akvik has thought. Walking together equally, evenly yoked. So it's something when you have two oxen that are yoked together and 
they're on the same level. When I say the same level, everything's the same. But if you get one oxen, they can be the same size. One wants to go fast, one wants to go slow. That's gonna have you're gonna have some hard times right there. Cause now it becomes you know, even though they're equally yoked, they're the same. But what's in the oxen makes them different. So look at this. My guy. Aloof. Familiar. Friend. And look at the prime the the prime root aloft to associate with hence to learn and causatively to teach so you're going back and forth you're teaching each other and this is sometimes where things slip in and you'll 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 start to see a difference but it's so subtle that you just ignore it. But you can't ignore it. When, when, when people start to veer off doctrinally. And then you cast them a lifeline and they refuse the lifeline. They are sold on what they believe. But what they believe has no scriptural validation then it's time to let them go. It's time to detach from them. Because the more you hang around, <laughs> that friendship builds, it's going, it's, it gets harder. And the next, next thing you know, oh, maybe they got a point. Then you start slipping. This is how this thing works. That's why he talks about it wasn't an enemy or him that hated me. It's people right there with you in this walk. How many people have stumbled because of people in the walk that they call their friends? <laughs> Mine acquaintance. And the root word that comes there is yada, to know, kinfolk, kinsmen. You know, th this, this goes so deep that it's observation, care, recognition, causatively, instruction, designation. I mean, you, you know them in every way. See, that is how they can do so much damage. Because you all have shared. And then when you don't, go the way they want you to go all the stuff that you gave them now was supposed to be between you and them now becomes weaponized and then you'll start to hear little bits and pieces from other folks where did you get that from and you know you only told that person so this is serious business So I wanted to read some of the other um, parts there for verse 14, where it says, We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of Elohim and company. Psalms, and that's Psalms 55, 14. Who in companionship with me sweetened our food, and we walked into the house of Elohim in, in Concord, the Net Bible. Their translation reads, And we... Share, share personal thoughts with each other. In Elohim's temple, we would walk together among the crowd. So what is this council? You know, intimacy. Look at this. Sweet council, secrets. Let, let, me, let, me, let me go back. I want to circle that. Because did not tell you, you telling them stuff nobody else knows about you. And then when, when 
when time comes and you part ways now, that stuff becomes weaponized because you all don't see eye to eye. We have definitely got to do more work up front and not loosely call someone friend because it's going to get us in trouble. Okay, let's keep rolling. So who was David talking about? Because this is this is his psalm. He's giving us He's talking here. And he's letting us peer into his life. So let's go here and look. And what I what I did to make it easier, I pulled it up by the person's name because I wanted you to see some things. Ahithophel. And I want you to see we're just going to read some verses that, that have Ahithophel in it. And I want you to see, just reading those verses, how this plays out. Okay, and Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gil, Gilonite, what does it say? David's counselor. Do you see do you see that from his city even from Galo while he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy was strong for the people increased continually with Absalom Okay now look look at this and one told David saying Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom and David said O oh, Yahuwah, I pray thee, turn the counsel of, of Ahithophel into foolishness. So this man, Ahithophel, was one of David's counselors. But look. So he, he, he knew David's, you know, I'm sure based on the psalm, if, if this is who the psalm is talking about, it's not unless it's somebody that's not written, but as far as as we can ascertain, is this is who the psalm is referring to. And you can see this. He was supposed to have been David's counselor. And when when you look it up here to advise. This is very interesting. So let's look look here. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Thou may, uh, mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. Okay, and Absalom and all the people and the men uh, people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Ahithophel with them. Okay, then Absalom, then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we should do. Now, notice, so Ahithophel here seems like he's calls, calling the shots. Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines. Now, here is where we go left and this is where you have to learn to part from people when people doctrinally start going left now we know if it's David's concubines whether you believe in concubines or polygamy or poly, uh, polygamy or not it was David's concubines this would have been considered adultery. So he's advising Absalom 
to commit adultery. Okay. And some of the things that people try to doctrinally steer us on, they start so subtle. And then the next thing you know, they escalate because behind one doctrinal flaw, there's a bigger doctrinal flaw. And you're going to see it time and time again. That's why I always warn you, watch the tables that you eat from. You shouldn't have five, six more rays that you're taking counsel from. You know, you, you got to, you know, you, the more rays you follow and listen to need, to, need to have a proven track record have proved themselves in the word. They've been constant in what they say and what they do. Okay, and then notice what he said. Which he has left to keep the house and all of Israel shall hear that thou has abhorred thy father. Then shall the hand of all that are with thee be strong. So, He's counseling him to do something against Torah. Some of us know some, some some things that are doctrinally true, but someone else has a different doctrinal standpoint, but yet and still we yet holding on to them. It's time to cut them loose. It's, it's that time. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of Elohim. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel. Both with David. And with Athelon. Okay. So we, we're not going to read any further. I think you get the gist. Of what I'm saying. So they, they looked at him almost like a prophet. That he had acquired. And what he's getting. He's getting from the father. Do you know any folks like that? Oh, yeah. Talk to me now, somebody. Everything's from the... And that's where you go wrong because... This right here is totally against Torah. So, we've got to be ever, ever, ever so careful. Okay, now, let's go back over. So, what about you? What does this mean for you? Okay, and we're going to talk about friends and how you should approach it. But for you, cast your burdens upon Yahuwah. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the, uh, the righteous to be moved. But thou, o Elohim, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. So, where does that bring us? As far as friends. Now, let me just look here. Uh, I see somebody had typed something. I want to make sure I didn't miss nothing. Okay, you had to let go of me. Okay, gotcha. Yes, it, it, it is a hard experience to let, let them go, but, you know, it's usually best. So, now, look here in Proverbs 17, 17. We, we got to connect some dots for you. Got to connect some dots. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Okay, a friend loveth. I want you to keep that at all times. A brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18.24 A man that has friends must show himself friendly. 
And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now, I pulled this passage right here because Mashiach Yahushua says some very interesting stuff to his Talmudim or his disciples. And in John 15, 9, Okay, as the Father has loved me. Now, what did it say back there? A friend loveth at all times. So, I'm back down here. Have I loved you? Continue you in my love. Okay, this right here. A friend loveth at all times. It's not emotional love as some would portray it. But I'm connecting it to how the Father talked about love and how we should be loving. Continuing my love. If you keep my commandments, a friend loveth at all times. If you if if a friend is a friend, they're gonna be abiding in this. Ain't no free willy. Do what I want. A friend is governed by commandments. You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Now notice all of this is before he gets to the friend part. Those things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain with you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another. Here we go. Boom. As I have loved you qualify not just any old kind of way because you got some folks call themselves friends but they treat you any old kind of way then notice what he says greater love has no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friend you are my friends if you do Whatsoever I command you. Now, so Mashiach did what the father said do. Now he's coming down and telling us to do what he says to do, which is what the father told him to do. And if we do that, we're called his friend. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for servants know of not what his sovereign doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the father. Ask the father in my name. He may give it you. These things I command you. That you love one another. Even in friendship. The commandments play a vital role. So we've got to make sure. Who we are letting in our circle is they're truly honoring these commandments, doing what the Father says. Because remember, we know what Amos 3 3 say how can two walk together except they be agreed? You start walking with someone that's starting to uh, go down a doctrinally flawed path, then you're basically starting to co-sign what they're saying. 
You know, I know some say, can't we all just get along? But at some point, you know, the truth is like a sword. Mashiach said he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And the truth is going to cause people to be separated, people to be cut. You know, I know we talk about all this unity and laying stuff aside. It all sounds good. But for me, you know, how can how can I, you know, you believe in stuff that's against Torah. And I'm trying to hold on to Torah. How are we going to, you know, meet in the middle? There is no meat in the middle when it comes to Torah. It's all or none. You can meet in the middle if you want. Maury taught a, a, a lesson <laughs> the other week on Karak. You know, that baldness. They don't want to come under the leadership and covering. You know, they, they, they every opportunity they get, they're going to make leadership and uh, those that teach look bad. Because all the only thing they're concerned about is themselves. And promoting what they believe. They're not teachable. I did a lesson on that. Are you teachable? There's no humility there. And if you can't see that. Then. You're heading down that path yourself. But the father always sends us warning. Before we go too far. And be careful, you know, who you just spill all your secrets out to. You know, when I first meet, sometimes you meet folks and they just want to spill out, tell everything. You know, let a person earn that, you know, show that they can be a friend. You just give them, hand them everything. Next thing you know, they don't put all your stuff in the in the, all your business in the street because you thought they were a friend because you all look, you know, you had like minds, you, you you jived, but the jive goes further than just your feelings and what you see it has to go to Torah, the ruach, try the spirit to see whether they are of Elohim. Because this is serious. And many of our people have been hurt and wounded. Because they weren't wise. We got to use wisdom. Watch who you let into your life. Watch who you speak and take counsel from. Because that counsel could soon flip on you. you no, know, I, I know some... Some folks, they, they'll go to five, six more raids asking questions. You know, it's, instead of, I'm like, why are you doing that? So when I find out a person is like that, they'll send out the same question to five, six more raids. I don't even answer them. I stop answering. Because that's, that's not how we work. You know, if you, if you uh, go to one more ring, ask counsel, or ask help or question, then at least give him the courtesy and say, more is it would be fine if I ask another more the same question. Because sometimes people do that to, to stir up strife. Well, Maury so-and-so believe this. Why do you believe this? So you even got to watch people when, you know, at least I do when they're asking questions. Sometimes people are trying to set you up and you don't even know it. You, you, hate, you hate to even think that people would be like that. Okay, and I'm going to go one last place. Uh, 
because I, I want you to see how this can work. We go into John 13, verse 8. Now, everybody knows who betrayed Mashiach Yahusha, but we'll just read a little bit. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Remember the uh, how it talked about um, when we were talking. Now I tell you before it come that when it comes to pass you might believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Then Yahusha had thus said, he was troubled in the spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Yahusha's bosom one of his disciples, whom Yahusha loved. Simon Peter Kepha therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who should be of him of uh, be of whom he spake he then lying on Yahusha's breast said unto him sovereign who is it and Yahusha answered he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it and when he has dipped the sop, he gave it unto Judas Iscariot or Yehuda, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Hasatan or Satan entered into him and then said Yahushua unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him, for some of them thought because uh, Yehuda had the bag that Yahusha had said unto him, by those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then having received the sop went immediately out, and it was night. So it, it just it just goes to show you it's it's not the enemy that's without, it's not him that hates you. Your greatest challenge is gonna come from those right within this walk. They're gonna be the ones that create the greatest adversity for you. And you've got to be armed for it. You've got to start acting in wisdom. You've got to start knowing how to temper your words. You've got to start knowing who caused division among you. And when they cause division, mark those that cause division. Because now is the time. We're getting close at hand. And people are going left and right. And if you truly say you want to make it in, you're going to have to start taking these necessary steps and evaluating those that are around you, those that are praying for you, those that you call on your team. Because I know I do. I do it all the time. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, I see where this person's heart at. I see where this person's mind at. Oh, time to keep moving. Because it's no time now to try to come down. I got I got business. I got things to take care of for the kingdom. So I hope you take this stuff in stride. 
Not trying to cause division. I'm just trying to warn you. If the sword comes and brings division, so be it. All righty. So <clears throat> let's go back over. <clears throat> we share this last little slide. Give you some things to think about and go read over. Now, the word, uh, and I got this from Jeff Benner, Benner has a book, the Greek, to the Greek to Hebrew words for vocabulary. It's pretty good. So it takes, uh, the word for friend is philo, and it converts over to ra'a in, or companion or friend in Hebrew. So I just went and found a couple of places to read for you, just so you can see. And you remember Job or Job? Now when Job's friends, you remember his, his three friends that accused him, that they were supposed to be fasting with him, and all the stuff that they were saying against him, okay? So that, go and read that, you know, uh, when you get a chance. I'm not going to really go through that because it, it's a whole book. <laughs> okay, and Proverbs seventeen seventeen, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. We we uh, read that one. Here's a good one, Proverbs eighteen twenty four. A man that has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Proverbs twenty four, verse twenty eight. Be not a witness against thy neighbor. And there's translated neighbor there, but that's the same word for friend, without a cause. And deceive not with thy lips. So this is serious business. And things, things when, 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 uh, when we start to come down, we're going to see a division. You're going to see a division of the wheat and tear. Um, you you're gonna you're gonna have to make choices. Do I hold on to this friend? Is it worth it? Okay, is it worth it? Okay, and what makes it so bad, like I told you, it's not going to be those in the world. It's those right here in the walk that's going to cause you the most heartache, grief, and pain. And you've got to arm yourself with Torah. Get your Ruach, get your Ruach lined up and ready. Because that's where it happens. It's not them without this talking going to talk about you and low rate your name and run you in the mud. It's those right here within. Then you'll understand what, what David or Daoud was talking about. And so I say this so that it's no surprise. I've warned you. I've done what the Father told me to do. Now it's up to you to take heed. To start a better process of who you qualify as friends and who you who you call yourself one to fellowship with and do different things with, you know, if it's just general fellowship, that's fine. But when you get into intimate fellowship, that's where the problems gonna come. All righty, Miss Bacall, let me let me stop. Somebody might try to email me saying, "Oh, more you." You hurt my feelings. Oh, well. Got one last one for you. I, I forgot I had this one. Proverbs 27.9. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So does sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Thine own friend, thy father's friend, forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Alrighty, so let's pray, Miss Bukka.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Remember, if you need to email me, you can email me at info at living branch.org. Father, I ask you today to help us to qualify according to Scripture, according to the words of Mashiach, friends. Because we need to earnestly look at who we allow to attach to us and who we attach to. Because we want to do everything in righteousness. We want to hear your voice. We want to know that the people that we are associating with have your heart that hear your voice that are humble, that have the same desire to get close to you like we do. We don't need anyone that's going to hinder, hinder that process. So we ask you, Father, to give us wisdom, give us understanding in this area, give us the execution to be able to execute the word of Elohim when it applies. Father, we give you praise, honor, and esteem for protecting us. Let not words be few. Letting us be able to watch and pray. Giving us patience in our spirit. Because some of us out there are lonely. Oh, thank you, Father. I appreciate this word you're about to give. Some of us out there are lonely. And we've been asking for friends. We've been asking for people in this walk. Little did we know what we could be asking for. Father, we pray and ask for just not any friends, but friends that have your heart. Friends that have your mind. Friends that are humble. Friends that are not self-centered. But Father, they have your love as the center. They love it at all times. And your commandments is the center of what they are all about. Those are the friends we are looking for. And Father, we are willing to wait for that type friend. Because we know the others will only bring heartache. They will only bring grief. They only bring disappointment. So, Father, we wait patiently. And, Father, we look at your word when it comes to friends and not our own feelings and emotions and thoughts. Thank you, Father, for the friend that sticketh closer than the brother. Thank you for sending them who has your heart. We give you praise this day. And though, Father... In our hearts, we might feel lonely. As Daoud said, we're going to trust in you. We're going to trust in you. We're going to trust, rest in you. Thank you, Father, for that. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Halel to Yahuwah. I mean, so I got to go back real quick. Father told me to go back here because some of you are lonely. Some of you need someone to talk to. He hasn't sent them yet. He's sending them. But until he sends them, beware of imposters. But in the meantime, cast thy burdens upon Yahuwah, and he shall sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Okay? And lastly, but I will trust in thee. That's the word he's given for you. He knows you're lonely. But he, he told me to go back and give this to you again. So you will understand exactly what he's talking about. He's going to sustain you. Don't, don't become overzealous to have friends in, the, in this walk that aren't qualified through him. Because they will bring you heartache and grief. All right, Miss Baka. You know where the Hebrew Foundation Resource Center is. Please check it out. If you're a new believer in the walk, you know there's some great books here. Uh, new believers start here. Great. That'll help you in this walk. If you have children, man, Pesach is right around the corner. Next year, next week is the beginning of the new year. Abib. So, you know, you still have time. You can always get, you know, Kindle paperback. 
And here's you can just search for this on Amazon, Hebrew Ten Commandments, and the Hebrew Passover story. Search for it, for it on Amazon, and you you have Amazon Prime. You can have that thing in a couple of days. Okay, if you want to be a part of our book market witnessing team, go to www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org, and I'll send those bookmarkers out to you. Okay, and if you would like to support us, you can do so through Cash App, through PayPal. Or you can do it through the mail. Um, send it to our local address. And if you did send a donation through mail, I'll be checking that on Monday. Got kind of busy during the week. So I put at the end, warning, warning, warning. This is what this has been. Take heed, Miss Baca. Let the words sink in you. And... Know that when Yahuwah sends you a friend and is qualified according to Torah, it, it's, it's going to be a wonderful thing. All right, Ms. Baca, make sure you tune in uh, to the Path to Yahuwah and, and uh, the combined service Path to Yahuwah and Living Branch this evening. Uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can go to the pathyahuwah.com. Talked to Murray last night. He's, going, he's got a great lesson for today. He always have great lessons. These lessons here of late have been power packed. Oh man, meat, food for the soul. I just be looking forward to them. So if, if you want the address and you want to drop by and fellowship with us, you can go to um, the website, living-branch.org. And right there at the top, um, under my service announcement, the ser live service announcement, you'll see the local address. So, Ms. Picard, looking forward to fellowshipping with you, uh, whether it's online or in person. So, just know, let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Let me make sure I didn't have any more comments. Uh, okay. Appreciate everybody uh, for comments and chat. And, hey, got love for you all. And we're just going to make this the best Shabbat ever. Okay, this is Moray Medad Yahoo saying unto you, Ms. Baka, Shabbat Shalom.